I did a video a while back on breaking down the roundhouse kick, and I had a subscriber ask me to break down the different types of roundhouse kicks. In this clip, we'll dive into some of the biomechanical and anatomical differences between a kickboxing roundhouse kick and a Muay Thai roundhouse kick. All right, so this one admittedly is definitely gonna be my favorite to break down. Okay, this is a roundhouse kick from Superleg. Not only are we gonna look at this one, we're gonna compare it to a traditional kickboxing round. Now this is a switch kick and he's, he's kicking up high rather than kicking down low. But there's a couple of differences that I want you to notice between something like a traditional kickboxing roundhouse kick and a just absolutely beautiful Muay Thai roundhouse kick. So the first thing I want you to notice is the amount of hip extension that occurs when he's stepping back. So right there is, is as much hip extension as Alex Pereira gets. It, he looks like he gets a little more when, he gets some there, but it looks like he gets a little more than he does because he's leaning back. And again, he's leaning back because he wants to kick a little higher, but the amount of hip extension and the hip thrusting movement or the, from the glute engagement right there, I mean, that's just putting a ton of stretch on muscles, particularly like the rectus femoris that cross the hip and the knee. So it flexes the hip and flexes the knee. And we know that if we get that quick eccentric movement, which is what's happening here, that concentric is going to be even stronger uh, due to that stretch shorten reflex. So a little bit more hip extension. As he turns over, we're going to move up a little bit higher on the body. Boom, right there. So a couple things. Look at the plane or look at the movement of the arm compared to the plane of the torso. So Alex's arm could be way back here and maybe could have gotten a little bit more counter movement and whip in that kick. Not that he definitely, not that he needs it. I mean, the dude can touch people in the leg as we, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that video, but he just touches people in the leg with like barely kicking and they just like go down. But that amount of power that is just why it feels so different whenever somebody who's really good at Muay Thai kicks you uh, along from other reasons, but they've got all of these really tiny details nailed down. So ton of hip extension, ton of swing in the arm. I also want you to notice when they make contact, look at Alex Pereira's trunk. It's not nearly as flexed and his cervical spine isn't as flexed as Rod Tang's, or excuse me, as Superlex. Boom, so super flexed trunk here. His anterior chain is super engaged. Muscles like the rectus abdominis and the obliques as well. Not only that, watch how he kind of slings his head down as he kicks. This is what Rod Tang was doing with his elbows. He's almost like he's preparing the body and priming the body to flex the global trunk flexion, cervical flexion, hip flexion, all the way through contact. Boom. So this, this is a, these are a couple of things that differentiate a lot of the power generated from a Muay Thai round kick versus a, a regular kickboxing round kick. Notice he's, his head is not nearly as flexed as Superlex was. So let's just watch it one more time and note the differences. So not as much hip extension, not as much of an arm swing, and then not as much trunk and neck flexion as whenever Superlex does it. Hip all the way thrown forward and extended. That arm swing is already coming through. As soon as he makes contact, his head and his spine are all like maximally flexed and just all that snap and power goes through Rod Tang's leg. All in all, I really don't think the right question to ask is which is better. People are gonna have their preferred styles for certain situations. So the better question to ask is which is right for the situation? I mean, there are arguably fewer kicks that are more versatile and useful than the roundhouse kick. Hopefully now you have a little bit better of an understanding behind some of the biomechanical and anatomical differences of a couple of different roundhouse kicks. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.